Welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. I am Darren. And I'm Trem. And a warm welcome to the Den of Gaming, and thanks so much for helping me out while Bajo is over in America at this year's E3 gaming conference. Of course, you'll recognize Trem from Studio 3. Noob detected, noob detected, charging my laser. Settle down, you silly robot. He's not a noob. Are you? Absolutely not. I've been playing games since I was your height, Daz. Mm. My senses do not lie, but I will abort my firing sequence. And now... It's okay, he thinks everyone's a noob. Coming up on the show, Lego Harry Potter. The Lego games are usually excellent, but does this one offer up a magical gaming experience? Plus, we'll be taking a look at my pick of the best game of all time. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. That is an acceptable choice. And we'll be tackling more of your questions in Ask Good Game. But first, ones at the ready. Lubus Expelliarmus. Well, if you're a fan of the Lego games and a fan of Harry Potter, then you'll be happy to hear that a brilliant marriage of these two worlds has come about in the latest Lego game, Lego Harry Potter Years 1 to 4. It's available across all platforms, but we review the 360 version, and I think this might actually be my favourite LEGO game to date, Trent. Yeah, definitely, Hex. I mean, I love the Harry Potter movies, but there are a lot of them, which is great that they've decided to break the games up. So the first game will cover the first four years, so we can expect another game to wrap up the story. Yeah, and it was a great recap, too, because it's been ages since I've seen the movies, or, or read the books for that yeah. matter, so I could kind of go back and, and relive those moments of Harry, Hermione and Ron and their first couple of years at Hogwarts, it's the Quidditch matches, learning spells, it's all there. The game starts exactly where the books and film do. Harry is left in the doorstep of his muggle home and years later he is sent for to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hagrid is there to lead you from the Leaky Cauldron to Diagon Alley and of course the Goblin takes you to Gringotts Bank where your inherited fortune has been stored. Now there's no actual dialogue in LEGO games, it just sounds and gestures, but nevertheless the cutscenes mirror the films almost exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, almost. There are a few signature Lego additions to it. Yeah, those are great. They're always good fun and they add that signature Lego stamp to the game. Once you're at Hogwarts, one of the first spells you'll learn is Wingardium Leviosa, which will be the spell you probably use the most throughout the game. It allows you to levitate objects, create stairs, assemble items in mid-air, or lift one another to higher platform areas. Although I think you and I, Hex, got into a few too many magical battles in co-op when we were supposed to be focusing on finishing the story. Hmm. I love those little cars in the Weasley Garden, they were great. You know, I think I enjoyed this game most when we played it in co-op. You know, it's all about using the right spell to find a hidden platform or the right potion ingredient, and it's so much more fun when we're working together. You will find, though, that you don't have all the spells immediately to unlock all the goodies available. <sighs> So frustrating trying to unlock. When you see something twinkling and you don't have the right spell to unlock it or see what's behind it yet. Yeah, oh. It does mean though that when you go through that area again, because you will go through certain areas a few times, there's always more for you to do there because you pick up new spells as you go. After completing each level, you unlock free play mode. So if you want to go back and collect every last stud or shield piece, you can. Harry is the only one who can really navigate a broomstick well, whereas Hermione is good with book puzzles and Ron can turn into his rat, Scabbers, which is extremely handy in getting into those hard to reach places. Along the way, you can also help out the odd student in peril and you'll be doing a lot of zapping of just about everything around you to collect studs, additional lives and just general loot. And I have to say that did get a bit tedious after a while, you know, zapping everything around you just to collect studs. 
It got to a point where I would just go into a room and enter a sort of zapping frenzy, zapping in all directions without even thinking because <laughs> half the time the item I needed was just hidden behind a plant or a banner or something. Sounds like my kind of game. Well, yeah, but there just wasn't a whole lot of strategy to it. Yeah, I agree. Those studs are the kind of thing you don't really need to worry about unless you're the I need to get every little item out of the game kind of people. They're called completists, Trem, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they're just not necessary, Daz. They're just extra points. See, you need to stay committed to the game in searching the little puzzles and finding the potions. Remember when we used the, the mandrake root with, to break the glass cabinet? Uh, yeah, and... but first we had to get the earmuffs out of the wardrobe so that we wouldn't be affected yeah. by it. That was great. Yeah. But what was your verdict on LEGO Harry Potter All Up? Well, I thought it was great, Hex. I mean, I never really played a LEGO game before, but I must say I like how they interpreted the films. All the classic movie moments were there. I liked being able to switch and play all the different characters, and I liked interacting with the paintings on the staircases. I'm going to give it eight and a half rubber chickens. You know, I've come to expect certain things from LEGO games. Great gameplay, fun co-op and puzzles, but most importantly, they tell the story of the films in wonderful detail, and they've really done that here. Plus, it was great to see that co-op split-screen function again in LEGO Harry Potter. It's 8 out of 10 for me. Did you know that all LEGO men are designed to look like me? And that's why they're all so realistic. I don't think they have pasta scoops for hands in LEGO games. Yeah, though. or ping-pong eyes, which is... Bizarre. Well, obviously they're not as good, but uh, you can see the resemblance. All right, Trem, feel like helping out some of the spawn with their gaming questions? Sure, Hex. What's bugging them today? All right, well, let's see what Aiden from Canberra has to ask. I'm getting wireless internet soon. When I get it, can I go online on my DSi and Nintendo Wii? Well, Aiden, not necessarily. The DS and Wii need a wireless network to connect to the internet, which isn't the same thing as wireless internet. Yeah, wireless internet just means that you have a modem that receives a wireless connection to the internet. Yeah, and you won't be able to connect your Wii or DS to that. What you will need, though, is a wireless router to connect your wireless modem to. And once you do that, then the wireless internet will become a wireless network and your Wii and DS will be able to connect to the internet through that. OK, moving on to this from, as if I'd say, in Melbourne, Victoria. Do you know any other games like Dota? Well, as if I'd say, Dota has actually spawned a whole genre of games known as MOBA, which stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. Wh wait, aren't multiplayer games online battle arenas by default, Hex? Well, yeah, it's a dumb name, but anyway, there are plenty of Dota-like games to choose from. Demigod would be my first suggestion, although it's a bit more basic than Dota, so if you're looking for something more advanced, you might want to try some of these other ones. Yeah, you could have a look at Heroes of New Earth for some solid MOBA madness. And there's also the upcoming Bloodline Champions, which is still in beta, but is definitely worth keeping an eye out for if you're a fan of MOBA, which you clearly are. All right then, Hex, let's move on to this one from David in Hamley Bridge, South Australia. On Halo Wars, I need help on the level in which you help three drop ships, but they keep exploding. Can you help me, please? All right, David, just follow our tips and you'll get through this level, no worries. So the first thing you should do is head straight towards the subway with all your units and clear out the Covenant. Once you do that, then protect the civilians as they head towards the dropships, taking out any pesky Covenant sniper towers along the way. And you should just ignore Cargo Ship 3 as that blows up no matter what you do, so don't waste any units on that and just focus on getting the civilians to dropships 1 and 2. Split up your forces between the two dropships to defend them and don't forget to use your heal ability on them if they've taken any damage. After a little while, you'll be able to build a fire base. Once you can, deploy one in the grassy area and build as many supply pads as you can and you should upgrade it to a fortress as soon as you can afford to. Once upgraded, build a few turrets to defend your base and start working on getting an airfield up and running because you're going to want some more Hornets ASAP. It will take a little while to build the reactors and airfield though, so meanwhile build yourself a few warthogs to defend yourself. It's also worth building a barracks and putting a few units of marines into some of the guard towers around the map so you can see what's going on a bit better. Then, once you have some Hornets coming out, keep a few to defend the civilians and send a couple more to protect the dropships. As the clock counts down, you might want to shift your focus onto just protecting the dropships rather than the civilians and just keep using that heal ability. Do all of that and you should be able to make it through to the end, no problem. Five, four, three, two, launch. All systems green, clearing launch platform. Good luck down there. 
Also, if you haven't done it yet, there's an achievement you can get on this level. If you look right near to where you start, you'll see there's a building that has a big walkway attached to it and a control panel at the base of it. Activate the control panel and you'll find a man named Adam who you need to get to one of the dropships. Be careful with him though, one hit and he'll die. So make sure the path to the dropship is clear and defended. Anyway, I think we're out of time for this week. Huh. Well done there, Trem. You seem to really know your stuff. <laughs> of course I do. <clears throat> and Spawn, I think you know what to do with those questions of yours. Send them in here and Bajo will be back to answer those next week for you. Although, he won't be able to answer them as good as me. <laughs> Chewy? Ew, gross. Alright Trem, well mm. since we're here in the den of gaming, I think one thing everyone would want to know is what is your all-time favourite game? Oh, that's a toughy hex, I'd have to say, because I spent most of my time playing Nintendo 64. In fact, I did save up all my DOSH and it was the first ever console I ever bought on my own. It was one of my proudest moments. But I'd have to say favourite game, I can't go past the old Ocarina of Time. Ah, uh, fantastic choice, I must say. Out of the wide selection though, why that one? Well, don't laugh, okay, but see the whole thing with Zelda, right, it was released uh, at the same time that I was born, right, that's a fact for you, and I, alright, I, I used to think that I was Link, right, so I used to play the game and I saw myself as Link, I had boomerang, I had a slingshot, I had blonde hair. And I heard you also play the recorder as, as well? Yeah, let's not go there, anyway, easily my favourite game. I see you've got the hat. Did you wear a little green skirt too? You did, didn't you? Yes. Okay, but how did you find the game as a whole? Oh, absolutely flawless, Hex. Like, from start to finish, you're engaged by all the sound effects and surroundings, and Link moves so swiftly. Every sound is matched with the on-screen action. Even if you're doing nothing, you can still hear something in the background, and then even down to the ocarina, which produces some infectious tunes that you're bound to be humming in your everyday life. Right. Bound to. Funny thing that we actually have an ocarina, an ocarina here in the studio. So You're kidding! You can actually give us a, a rendition, oh, maybe a for real? song or. All right, check this out. Stuff. All right, you ready? <coughs> I'm Link. How about we just have Kane tell us about the storyline? Excellent choice. So, the perfect hero's journey, yeah? You start off as a boy and you're chatting to Deku trees and then all of a sudden you're bartering your rupees for all these extreme goods. And then you're just pretty much smashing everything that gets in your way to saving Hyrule from the malicious Ganondorf. I mean, what more could you want? I think one of my favourite things that's consistent throughout the Zelda games is if you try and attack a chicken, <laughs> you know, they unleash their chicken wrath on you. You know, yeah. it's just they, they're coming at you from all angles and seeing that in 3D for the first time was so cool. It looks like they're coming from the screen. Just I love that. I love that. Yeah. What was your favourite, like, the most jaw-dropping moment in the game? Oh, I'd say jaw drop. Um, I really liked. I remember uh, getting to Death Mountain. So all of a sudden the surroundings and the music changes and the mood changes, and all of a sudden you're you're excited for something. Like the, the entire game changes, the entire mood. So you know that you're progressing. Well, there must have been something about the game that you didn't like. What? Oh, Tough again. If I had to say that there was something wrong with it, probably the game's only fault would be that you can't skip through the text or cinematic parts. Ah, it's the trade-off though, isn't it? Because you really want to be involved in the story and you want to find out what happens, but at the same time, if you just want to, you know, get to the gameplay, yeah. you don't have that option to skip. It's really frustrating. Especially if you've clocked the game and you want to play it again, it's just like, come on, I already know this part. So mm. it's hurry up! Cutscenes you can't skip through. Yeah. Indeed, unskippable text and unskippable cutscenes have been frustrating gamers for decades. Especially since it's the simplest, the most simplest of programming tricks to implement a skippable cutscene. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Well, I think one thing that's great about Ocarina is that it's it's known for actually introducing gaming conventions like lock-on targeting, or yeah. I think it was called Z-targeting yeah. back then, or, or being able to map abilities to certain keys so that you can, you know, switch them up during gameplay. Yeah, it's, I was going to say that as well. That's just good about the game. Well, thanks so much, Trem. We always love talking about Ocarina on the show. It's a great game and it's a real classic, so if you haven't played it, you absolutely have to. Well, that actually belongs to the set, so you can't... Mm -hmm. Our feeding Basil back online. Hey, yeah. Oh, so you like music, do you, Trent? Yeah. Would you like to go co op on a game of Sing Star? Yeah, alright. Sweet. Awesome. Oh, Hex. Sadly, that brings us to the end of another show. 
thank you so much for joining us in the Den of Gaming. Oh, dude, thanks so much for having me. I had a, had a ball, Hex. So, Dazza, you didn't have to fire up your laser beam thingy in the end, did you? Did I pass your noob test? Well, Barjo, we'll be back next time with a special show from the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3 for short, with all the latest info on the games that we're going to be playing over the next year or so. So, Darren, did you get to go along as well? Affirmative. Oh, really? Did you uh, fire up your puny little laser thing there as well? Huh? Affirmative. Huh? Don't forget to get your votes in on the One Face Review on Crash Bandicoot with an appropriate thumb angle and to cast your vote now online poll on your choice of music games. DJ Hero, Guitar Hero or SingStar? <laughs> That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Guitar Hero for sure. Okay. <laughs> Charging my laser! Darren! Darren! Oh. Gotta stop doing that. I only do it to noobs. Mm. Cool hat, though. I've heard that too.